The human body is incredibly complex, and sometimes those complexities manifest in unexpected ways. Prepare to witness the astonishing diversity of human existence as we delve into shocking real-world mutations. From beneficial adaptations to conditions that seem to defy medical understanding, these are the anomalies that will challenge your perception of what it means to be human. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have cows. Cows are one of the sweetest and cutest animals out there, and it totally makes sense why people call them grass puppies. The area around Chernobyl was known for its agriculture before the disaster, so of course that means there were definitely a lot of cows that could be found. Since farm animals are not only expensive, but can also be used as a source of income, many people took their farm animals with them, but many of these animals had already been exposed to the radiation in some capacity, and while it didn't affect them right away, the the newer generations saw much more of the effects. In 1989, many farmers began reporting birth defects in their animals, some being much more severe than others. As time went on, the cows became less mutated, but that doesn't mean the effects went away. As the cows continued to graze on feed that was contaminated, the effects became more internal. This has led completely normal looking cows near the exclusion zone to begin producing milk that is toxic and not fit for consumption. This is just one of the clear examples of how even though the visible Visible effects may have worn off, there are still lasting effects that we probably hadn't previously considered. In our number 9 spot today we have barn swallows. Any animal who lives in the exclusion zone have been affected by the disaster and that includes those who spend most of their time in the sky. I'm obviously talking about birds. The barn swallows in Chernobyl are one animal who have seen a change in their physical appearance that has lasted all of the years since the nuclear meltdown. It is unclear why these birds have been affected greater than their land animal counterparts or if these changes will ever reverse to their previous state, but here's what they are currently dealing with. The swallows appear to have severely deformed beaks, disproportionate feathers, some had partial albinism, and they were seen to have much smaller brains. Of course, some of these issues are much worse than others, and I'm sure these changes have significantly affected their ways of life, but of course they continue to adapt as time goes on. It is sad that this human-made disaster has affected them in such a negative way, but the fact that they are still around really shows their adaptability and resilience. In our number 8 spot today we have boars. Boars are often seen wandering around the exclusion zone, but they also make their way into the surrounding towns as well, which is creating quite a problem. Boars are a fairly common food source and it's not unusual to come across one, but here's the problem if you live in the area, how are you supposed to tell which boars are radioactive and which aren't? Basically, you can't until it's too late. The boars who aren't radioactive might come across and intermingle with one who is, but they also like to eat much Mushrooms, and if they're searching for their food within the exclusion zone, it's a highly likely possibility that they'll find themselves eating a radioactive mushroom. This is posing quite a problem. In 2017, there was a study that found that approximately one out of every three boars that were killed in the nearby areas of Germany, which for the record isn't even that close to Chernobyl, have been found to be radioactive and super unsafe for human consumption. You'd think that being that far away would make you safe, but as we clearly now know, the effects of the disease disaster stretched far and wide. In our number 7 spot today we have Shavalsky's horse. These horses first originated in Mongolia and were wild horses that became endangered. They first became endangered due to hunters who would often kill the stallion, which of course would provide many difficulties in terms of reproduction. These horses weren't doing well in captivity, which made things even more difficult. This combined with the harsh winters, which would often claim their lives, left things looking quite grim for this species. In the late 1990s, however, in an effort to help repopulate these animals, 30 of them were released into the Ukrainian side of the exclusion zone, and it is believed that some of these original horses are actually still alive today, which is amazing, but camera trap images have also shown young horses, which means that they are repopulating, which is a huge win. Their expanding population in such a harsh environment could mean that they might potentially be able to return from the brink and go on to continue as a species, which is something we always want to see. In our number 6 spot today, we have cats. In the rush of the evacuation, many pets were left behind in Chernobyl, and that of course includes cats. With little to do and of course more kittens being born, this paved the way for a group of feral cats to take over the exclusion zone. These cats wander in and out of the zone and find all of their favorite snacks such as radioactive rodents or the less common radioactive insects. These cats certainly have had quite a difficult time surviving as they are a perfect tasty snack for much larger predators and are certainly not equipped to deal with 
with the harsh winters, but even still, there is said to be at least a hundred stray cats living in the exclusion zone. There are efforts underway to have the uncontaminated ones put up for adoption, but the difficulty is in testing them and also re-domesticating these animals who have had to fend for themselves for so long. In our number five spot today, we have dogs. Since we just talked about the cats who were sadly left behind, it's only fair we talk about the dogs too. It's strange that these two domesticated animals would have such different experiences after the disaster, but they absolutely have. There are far more dogs who have managed to survive throughout the years than cats, but that is most likely due to the fact that they aren't as easy to catch and eat as prey as cats are. But dogs have a whole other challenge, and that is they have a hard time hunting and feeding themselves. There are workers who continue to work the dangerous job at the plant, and they continually feed the dogs living in the zone, which is something that truthfully is so nice to hear. It is also said that there are dogs living in this area that have begun mating with wolves, which is only going to breed dogs that will be more likely to be able to survive on their own, which I suppose is a good thing. Similar to the cats, many of the stray dogs are being studied to see if they can be adopted into homes outside of the zone so that they don't have to continue living in these harsh environments that they really were not bred for. In our number four spot today, we have European grey wolves. One of the species of animals that has been thriving ever since the disastrous nuclear meltdown has been the European grey wolf. Due to the lack of humans in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, they have been able to thrive, and it has been said that the wolves in this area actually have a population that is seven times higher than that of comparable sites. Researchers are still trying to figure out exactly why this is happening, but it has obviously shown them that despite the effects of radiation in humans, the radiation clearly isn't affecting the wildlife's ability to reproduce. So this seems like just a regular grey wolf, but here's where things get a little different. Just because the wolves seem to be doing fine doesn't mean they aren't radioactive. These wolves, since they're such a high population, are beginning to travel farther and spread out more, which creates quite a problem. Not that we're just going up and petting wolves, but if you did come in contact with one of these wolves, you'd be getting a high dose of radiation just by touching them. Touching a carcass of these wolves with bare hands is absolutely not recommended. So while it is absolutely incredible to see the wildlife doing so well in this zone, we are now faced with an entirely different issue that we haven't really ever had before. In our number three spot today, we have the Eurasian lynx. This one is on this list for a different reason than most. It isn't because of anything this animal is or isn't doing, but instead is due to the fact that this animal was once believed to have entirely disappeared from Europe. It was fairly recently in 2014 that researchers realized they had made a comeback in a big way. Similar to most of the animals we've talked about today, the Eurasian lynx has been able to thrive due to the lack of human population and interference. Their downfall was attributed to urbanization as well as hunters, and they were mostly wiped out in the early 20th century, although they remained in certain parts of Siberia. There is still a lot more research that needs to be done about these creatures to determine exactly how radioactive they are, and this will take time due to the dangers of the zone they reside in, as well as the nature of these creatures in general. But just being able to see that an animal that was struggling has been able to make such a comeback is probably one of the best things to come out of such a horrible disaster. In our number two spot today, we have bison. Bison are right up there with wolves for most dangerous radioactive animal, and that is due to their size, as well as the fact that they are a source of food for some. These huge animals can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and are certainly not an animal that is easily messed with. Many bison weren't affected by the radiation immediately, and instead it became much more of an issue once they started eating food that had been contaminated. They like to feed on grass, and a lot of it, and the radiation didn't only affect animal life, but plant life as well, making their food source a literal feeding ground for radioactive material. Similar to the wolves we talked about before, running into these guys isn't only a threat now because of their size, but now because if you get too close, you could be facing some unsafe levels of radiation. In our number one spot today, we have spiders. I've talked about my hatred for spiders a lot on this channel, but to be honest, they keep doing cool things, so I have to keep talking about them. Okay, well maybe this one is less cool and more scary, but still, they deserve a spot. Spiders that are residing within the exclusion zone are of course radioactive, but it's not only the spiders that are now dangerous to touch, but it is also their webs. Spiders in Chernobyl are literally making radioactive webs, which is the stuff straight out of a comic book. These radioactive webs are also being woven in much different ways than they were before, which would suggest some sort of genetic mutation at play. Spiders were already a creature I'd like to stay far, far away from, but radioactive spiders really adds a whole other level. Not only are the spiders now dangerous for non-radioactive animals 
to touch, but walking through their web is equally as dangerous to those who aren't thriving in the radiation. So not only do you have to watch out for the regular old radioactive material, but now also the never ending construction of radioactive webs. Great. Number 10 on this list is human tails. If we take a look at the animal kingdom, tails are a pretty common thing. In fact, most birds, mammals, reptiles, and even fish have tails. Humans, however, for the most part, don't. Well, most of us anyways. There is a rare mutation that humans can be born with an actual tail. It's actually believed that very early on, as a baby is being developed in the womb, there will be a tail attached to this child. It's a very small thing that will go away, but for some humans, it never does. This makes a lot of sense because it's believed that humans evolved from creatures that would have had tails. In fact, pretty much all monkeys have tails, so it makes sense that at one point or another, we also would have had these little things poking out of our backside. Unlike a lot of other entries on this list, this mutation isn't necessarily super dangerous. For most people, they go on to live totally normal lives just with a tiny little tail. Obviously, it's got to be pretty bloody annoying though, because I feel like your entire life you'd just be perpetually sitting on your own tail, which would kind of suck. But there could also be some cool things with this too. Some people actually have the capability to move their own tail. Like they actually have control over the full thing. I don't think that they can swing off of trees or anything like that, but still, moving a tail around would definitely make for a pretty neat party trick. Number 9 on this list is reptile hearts. Let me paint you the picture here folks. You're chilling out at your home, everything is good, it's just a typical day in your 59 year old male life. Boom, your chest starts to feel a bit strange, then it starts to get worse. The pains are significant right now and you think, holy mother of God, am I having a heart attack. You rush to the hospital just praying that you make it there in time and that your heart can hold on until then. You get there, but once you do, you get a very surprising report. The good news is that you aren't suffering from a heart attack and that death isn't totally imminent. The bad news is that you're slowly turning into a snake. Well, at least your heart is doing that. This is literally exactly what happened to a 59 year old man. How this happened, why this happened, and what we can do to prevent it are all things that doctors truly don't know. In truth, this was only the second time that this has ever reportedly happened. Now it's very possible that it's happened to other people and just hasn't been reported yet, but either way, it's still super rare. Being a snake would definitely be pretty cool, but I think I'd like to stick with my human heart if that's alright. Number 8 on this list is multiple breasts. Having two breasts is honestly a pretty unique human thing. Think about all of the other mammals out there that have way more than that. Back in the day, it's believed that we would have evolved from creatures that had way more than two breasts. So why did this go away? Well, they're really just just wasn't any reason to have more than two. Cats, for instance, have more than that, but they also give birth to multiple offspring at a time, so there's an actual purpose for having them. Humans typically give birth to one other human at a time, and in very rare cases, two. Therefore, having more than two breasts just really doesn't make any evolutionary sense. However, the genes are there, we've done it before, and that's why, in rare cases, sometimes it happens again. What's kind of strange is that this mutation is way more common in men than it is in women. Women. And because it's way more common in men, these additional breasts often go unnoticed. The women that do end up with this mutation typically have these extra breasts removed. They can't really decide where these things pop up and having a breast growing in your armpit has got to be pretty uncomfortable. Number 7 on this list is Ectrodactyly. This is commonly known as a split hand or split foot mutation. Middle fingers or middle toes will usually be affected and in some individuals literally all four hands and feet can be hit with it. This sucks for everybody who has to deal with it, but especially those who have all their limbs affected, it's gotta be brutal. Think about having to walk around or grab things like this. You can't, you wouldn't be able to. How are you supposed to drive a car or text on a phone or literally walk properly if it's your feet that are affected? This should affect people at birth, so if you don't have it right now, then you should be okay. Number six on this list is the Proteus Syndrome. Proteus Syndrome is a rare condition which will affect your bones, your skin, your muscles, and literally all other tissues in the body. This mutation is really very scary, and I feel for those who it affects. Basically, parts of your body will grow at a proportion to the rest of your body. 
This mutation is also asymmetric, so you may have your left leg get really big, but your right leg stays at a normal size. This syndrome can also affect literally any part of your body too. Your face, nostrils, legs, arms, ears, you name it, and if you have this mutation, they might just get really big. This mutation obviously makes it very difficult for those individuals to live everyday normal lives and will often be struggling with it forever. It also makes it far more likely to develop tumors and some skin conditions that your everyday individuals usually don't need to worry as much about. If you're watching this video and you don't already have it, then you're probably good unless you're between the ages of 6 months and 18 months. That's when you typically notice the growth and from there on out, it's just going to continue with age. Number 5 on this list is hypertrichosis. Ever wondered what it's like to be the teen wolf? Well, if you develop this mutation, then this is probably as close as you're going to be able to get. Basically, this mutation is excessive hair growth. We're talking like serious levels of hair here, guys. Not just a scruffy beard, but full on locks growing out of your cheeks and everything. For a very long time, you'd often see people who had this disease working in the circus. Julia Pastrana is one of the most famous ones. She was born in Mexico in 1834 and made a name for herself in the circus community, becoming a performer and showing off her mutation. And honestly, shout out Julia. I have to imagine that it's very difficult being born with something like that, but Julia went out there, made the best out of a bad situation, so honestly, solid respect. Number 4 on this list is Unor Tan Syndrome. So this mutation is super specific and right now the scientific community is still trying to decide whether it's an actual mutation or if people are just trying to punk us. Let me explain. UTS is a syndrome that was proposed by the Turkish evolutionary biologist Unor Tan after studying 5 members of the Euless family in rural Turkey. These individuals all walked on all fours, all used primitive speech and appeared to have congenital brain impairment. It's very strange though because nobody really knows why this happened. That's why some people in the scientific community have come out and talked about how genetics have absolutely nothing to do with it. But if genetics do have something to do with this and this is a mutation, then it sounds to me like humans are straight up devolving. Losing all connection to our human characteristics and getting closer to dogs or other four legged animals. I don't know guys, this is a weird one. Let me know in the comments what you guys think it could be. Number 3 on this list is Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. Wow, alright, that was a mouthful. Well, for simplicity's sake, and so I don't embarrass myself anymore by mispronouncing this thing, we're gonna call this FOP from here on out. FOP is a very dangerous and rare condition that you do not want to get. This mutation literally causes your muscles and tissues to start to calcify and ultimately turn into bones. Yeah, you heard that right guys, you literally start to become just a bone. Basically a statue with skin over top of it. As you can imagine, movement can become very limited when you have this mutation and you'll have some other health issues arise as well. Breathing can be difficult and it can also become difficult to speak or eat. And that leads to other major problems that I don't even want to get into. This one is scary as all holy hell and really makes me appreciate the ability to move around. Number 2 on this list is trimethylaminuria. Wow, I swear whoever came up with these names is literally just doing it to mess with us guys. Alright, this mutation is definitely the stinkiest on this list. People who develop this mutation just literally can't break down certain smells. Their body is incapable and therefore these smells just sort of come off of their bodies at all times. Sadly, it's not rose petals or apple pie either. Of course, it has to be smells like rotten eggs, garbage, urine. Just absolutely gross smells that will be so overtly pungent that everybody in the room is going to be able to smell it. The worst part is, it doesn't matter how much the person showers or douses themselves in deodorant, they're not going to be able to get rid of this smell. And finally, number one on this list is Alien Hand Syndrome. I think that this one is by far the scariest thing on this list, guys. Alien Hand Syndrome is a mutation where you're literally no longer in control of one of your hands. Your brain can no longer control what your hand does and it just sort of acts as if it's got a mind on its own. I can't even imagine how scary that would be. Like imagine you're just driving your car and this alien limb just starts punching you in the sack. 
that's game over, dude. Like, there's no coming back from that. And this can happen at any age, and usually it comes after a stroke or some other deep trauma. So just kind of cross your fingers that your hand doesn't decide to go haywire on you. Coming into number 10, we have the man with the melted face. Huang Chunkai has been described in global media as the man with the melted face because he suffers from a tumor known as neofibromatosis. Sadly for the Chinese national, his tumors were left untreated for 30 years, which meant that his deformity spiraled out of control. Luckily, the Chinese government stepped in and offered him surgical reductions. He has now had five, which has reduced his 15 kilogram tumor. Although sadly, it will always continue to grow back, so he's always going to need surgeries. Tumors, of course, stem from cell mutations. Coming into number nine, we have mermaid syndrome. Mermaid syndrome, as it is colloquially known, is something called arianomelia. It's a rare deformity that sees the person's legs fused together like a mermaid tail. The condition is extremely rare and usually goes hand in hand with kidney and bladder issues. Many babies are still born with the syndrome, and the oldest known sufferer, Tiffany Yorks, died aged 27. In 2009, a 10 year old girl, Shyla Pepin, died from the genetic mutation too. Coming into number eight, we have tree syndrome. Tree syndrome, as it has been called, is a rare genetic condition caused by an inactivating pH mutation in either the ever one or ever two genes. The condition means that a person grows scaly macules and papules which look like tree roots. The most famous sufferer is Didi Koswara, who died aged 42 in 2016. Coming into number seven, we have cyclopia. Cyclopia is the name given to the congenital disorder that creates cyclopses. No, they aren't stuff of Greek legends. Some cyclopses have existed in real life. There haven't been many living cyclopses, as usually cyclopia in babies results in miscarriages or stillbirths. As I said though, most human cyclopses do die within a few days. However, one cyclops goat in India is still living. Studying this goat may help humans with the genetic mutation survive in the future. Coming into number six, we have elephant syndrome. Most people have heard of the elephant man, but what people in the 1800s didn't know about Joseph Merrick was that he was actually suffering from Proteus syndrome. This is a genetic disorder and a gene mutation. The mutant gene causes horrifying disfigurations, leading body parts to grow rapidly and asymmetrically. Not all mutations cause visible disability. Some, like fish odor syndrome at number five, generate unusual smells. Fish odor syndrome is officially known as trimethylaminuria. This is a genetic disorder where the body cannot break down trimethylamine and comes from a mutated FMO3 gene. Unfortunately, this means that the sufferer smells. One sufferer, 36 year old Kelly Fadoe White from the UK, talked to the Daily Mail about her struggle, saying that her scent is fishy and oniony. She said that she has to work nights because her work colleagues complain of her smell. Coming in at number four, we have Harlequin ichiosis. This genetic mutation is pretty heartbreaking. It results in thick, diamond shaped skin clumps separated by cracks. It also affects the shape of the eyes, nose, and mouth, as well as often limiting bodily movements. Sadly, for sufferers, there is no cure, and the mutation affects around one in every 300,000 births. One sufferer, American Stephanie Turner, said that people think that she's been burned in a fire. Coming into number three, we have werewolf syndrome. Officially known as hypertrichosis or Ambras syndrome, this genetic mutation means that sufferers grow abnormal amounts of body hair over their entire body. Very strange at number two, we have tail syndrome. Tail syndrome, or a vestigial tail as it is known, is a mutation that means that some humans are born with extra vertebrae in their back, making it look as if they have a tail. One man in India actually had an 18 centimeter tail removed in October 2016. This has been called the longest human tail ever. The 18 year old Indian guy didn't see medics until he was into his late teens because of the social stigma attached to the mutation. I for one actually think I could get on board with the tail. Finally coming into number one, we have a mutation that causes two heads. Officially known as polycephaly, this is a birth defect usually involving a parasitic twin. This is the case for Abby and Brittany Hansel, famous 27 year old twins from Minnesota in America. The pair share one body but have separate hearts, stomachs, spine and lungs and, you know, two heads. Interestingly, they have one set of reproductive organs, so if they fell pregnant, they would both be the mother. Coming in at number 10, we have the fang-headed mountain lion. In November 2016, images of a dead mountain lion with fangs and whiskers growing out of the back of its head surfaced online. Sadly, this lion was killed by a hunter in southeastern Idaho, which 
I guess you know how I feel about that kind of thing. Anyway, an image of the lion was sent to the Idaho Fish and Game Southeast Regional Office. Now, this was in Pocatello. Am I saying that right? Let me know. These guys were not able to identify the deformity. Reportedly, they were baffled. Biologist Zach Lockyer said, It's a bizarre situation and a bizarre photo. I'm honestly sad that a hunter killed this animal, but at the same time, a double fanged lion? Terrifying. Coming into number nine, we have glow in the dark cats. It may sound like science fiction, but it isn't. In 2011, scientists generated mutant glow in the dark cats. I like cats, but I've read repeatedly, and I may add that cats officially meet the definition of psychopaths. I've read that if they were any bigger than they currently are, they would kill you. So, not so cute now. I'm not sure if cats glowing in the dark makes things any better. I have to say, if I saw one, I would be terrified or assume that I was drunk. Scientists genetically modified the cats, inserting one gene into them, a version of a green fluorescent protein that light up crystal jellyfish. Why? Well, actually, there's a really, really good reason. Apparently, it helps them resist feline AIDS, which I've just discovered is a thing. The GFP protein is found in jellyfish, and scientists use it in cats to make it easy to spot the altered genes and help scientists study HIV. So, scary as it may be, it's actually a really, really good thing. Though in the dark cats, though, I don't know. I need your opinion on this. Let me know in the comment section down below. Ah ha ha! I don't like this at number eight. We have the three eyed snake. Forget the three eyed raven. This three eyed snake is here and spreading fear in the Australian outback. Nicknamed Monty Python for the lols, I would not be laughing if I met this beast. Pythons scare me at the best of times, but pythons with three eyes? Boy, bye. This snake was found on a highway in, legitimately, the remote Australian town of Humpty Doo, which actually is the best town name that I have ever heard ever, and I would deeply consider moving there if it weren't for the three eyed snakes. Bummer. At the time, Monty, no, the cute name does not help. At the time Monty was discovered in March 2018, he was thought to be a baby and measured just half a meter. I say just, that's half a meter more snake than I can deal with. Now, well, I bet that he's bigger. It is thought that the reason for the deformity is, delightfully, a twin absorbed by Monty in the womb. That <laughs> snake womb. No! This discovery was made by Northern Territory Parks and Wildlife Rangers, so unfortunately it is definitely legit. Suffice to say, he sees you. There's always time for a dad joke, and don't even at me. So it seems that this isn't a one time only thing. Coming in at number seven, we have a two headed shark. Shout out to my friend Mingles, who absolutely loves a shark. Like, Babe, how do you feel about a two-header? I need to know. It seems in 2016, the Beeb reported that a two-headed shark embryo had been found, which, well, I mean a two-headed shark sounds like the plot for Sharknado 7 or Jaws 2027. Two heads! Honestly horrifying. Scarily shortly after that story broke, National Geographic, something I consider a trusted news source, published an article declaring that actually, they have been turning up worldwide, which is pretty freaking terrifying, am I right? It seems that blue sharks are most likely to have a mutant baby because they carry so many babies at a time. Double headed sharks. I will see you a two headed shark and raise you a two headed alligator. I need both hands to do this, so. <laughs> That's right, number six, two headed alligators. Holy moly, I cannot deal with a one headed alligator, let alone two. This is much worse than a two headed shark, in my opinion, because I feel like alligators are more prominent in our human living areas than sharks are. Like with sharks, I mean, we're kind of in their territory when we're in the ocean, right? But alligators. Kind of have to share. In 2014, a two headed gator was allegedly spotted in Tampa in Florida. It was spotted by a man named Justin Arnold who posted the images to social media, after which they were shared thousands of times by freaked out people. On Facebook, Arnold said that the gator had been reported by several people to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. A lot of people were dubious as to the authenticity, calling the image a hoax. I honestly really hope it is. The next animal is an urban legend rather than a fact, but if it is real, well, that's terrifying. Coming into number five, we have the meat slabs. In early 2000s, rumors started flying around the internet that McDonald's meat was made from genetically modified cow mutants, grown specifically to be burger food in a secret lab somewhere. The original source seems to be from a fake email uncovered in Brazil. The email said that the people who had seen the creatures reared in the lab were 
absolutely horrified, as like you obviously would be, right? They said that the mutants had no limbs, bones, horns, or fur, that their heads were the size of a baseball, and that they were fed through tubes directly to the stomach. Meat slabs. Grim. The email also stated that those who eat this meat are at the risk of catching a disease akin to AIDS and Alzheimer's. What on earth? Honestly, that's when they lost me. Like, eat this meat and you'll get AIDS? I don't agree. I think this is fake. Still though, scary. Coming into number four, we have the leaf rat. A farmer in the Ratlam district of India found a rat with a soybean plant growing out of its body on his land, which I imagine was a sight to behold. Farmer Datar Singh said that his neighbours filmed the mutant rat. Now the footage is pretty shocking and really, really sad because the rat seems to be struggling with its deformity. That's just a warning for you before I show you the footage. The plant growing in its back is really big and the rat is probably in a whole lot of pain. That pain is only going to continue to increase as the plant grows. So I guess you're wondering how did this happen, right? The best explanation is that a soybean seed must have fallen into an open wound in the rat's body and it then found the right conditions to grow. Horrifying. As the plant grew, it meant that the wound in the rat was unable to heal, leaving it constantly exposed, which makes me feel sick and sad at the very same time. Ooh. Coming into number three, we have the Fukushima fish. The Fukushima power plant accident took place in May 2011, during which a nuclear power plant spilled radioactive material into the North Pacific Ocean. Fast forward four years, and this beast was pulled out of the water near where the disaster took place. If that isn't a mutant fish, honestly, I don't know what it is. Honey looks prehistoric to me. Honestly, I just made that up. I feel like that might be my new favourite insult. Like, lol, you look prehistoric. I'm actually honestly not mean enough to say that to anyone, but I can think it. Maybe. No. It's too mean to even think, but a good, a good insult that you can have for free. Anyway, Japanese fisherman Hiroshaka Hiroshi tweeted an image of himself with the fish, which he explained to be a massive wolf fish double its size. Coming into number two, we have the beast. Have a look at this image and tell me what on earth you think this creature is. Or, uh, I don't know, is that claws? Cloven hooves? I'll give you a second to make up your mind. Done it? Good? So it seems that this poor creature was a lamb, and it was promptly and creatively dubbed the Devil Lamb after it was born. The story goes that in 2017, in a South African village, inhabitants were shocked and disturbed by the birth of a human looking lamb. Villagers were convinced that either bestiality or witchcraft were at play when the human looking lamb was birthed, although sadly the creature was stillborn. DNA samples confirmed that the creature was indeed a lamb, even though other people had other theories. Many locals were convinced that the dead sheep was the work of the devil and a bad omen of things to come. Devil. Finally, coming into number one, we have the animals of Chernobyl. This is actually so sad. Following the infamous Chernobyl disaster of 1986, a lot of animals were born with serious mutations. Chernobyl and the towns of Pripyat are still exclusion zones, meaning you can't go there, but obviously it's pretty hard to stop wild animals roaming. In the immediate fallout, farm animals produced seriously deformed offspring, such as this cow. Here is a lamb also reportedly from Chernobyl. Concerningly, there is now talk that Chernobyl wild wolves could be spreading mutations across Europe, which is, you know, worrying to say the least. Ten. Froggy. Meet Froggy. Froggy was discovered in an English garden. Froggy was a frog that had three heads and six legs. It might look like three frogs, but Froggy was actually only one. It was discovered by kids at a nursery who named him, but by the time people had arrived to look at Froggy, Froggy had escaped from his tank. I love saying Froggy. I just love it. It must have been that freakish mutant strength that got him out. Now, scientists say the mutation could have been caused by a genetic defect effect, a parasite, or nearby pollution. Alright, moving on to number 9 now, we have radioactive cows. Now, After the Fukushima power plant meltdown in 2011, radiation spread into the surrounding areas. A lot of that was farmland, where many cows were trapped inside barns as their owners fled to safety, leaving these mutant cows to live and breed. A study by one scientific journal found that newborn calves had one and a half times more radiation in their bodies than their parents especially in their muscles. And that's after just one single generation, so who knows what mutant cows might be around the corner. 
Next up at number 8 we have Stumpy the four legged duck. Now Stumpy was born in the UK in 2007 and had already made it to national television at just 8 weeks old due to the fact that he was born with two extra legs. His owners were amazed by this and they decided to keep Stumpy as a pet although he wasn't allowed to roam around with the other ducks in case his extra legs got stuck on bushes and stuff. Despite this he ended up losing his two legs over time anyway, they just dropped off first and then second. Since then scientists have been studying his DNA to try to understand what genes are responsible for the formation of limbs in animals. Next up at number 7 we have glow in the dark cats. Yes, look at them. These cats were part of a study to see how effective scientists methods of treating AIDS is. They make the cats glow by inserting jellyfish genes into their DNA along with genes to help fight AIDS. If the cats do glow they know they have successfully got the AIDS fighting genes in there too. Now they hope to use this method to cure AIDS within cats and then transfer that knowledge to humans. That is the official story but I wouldn't be surprised if they just wanted to make glow in the dark cats so they can cuddle them at night and use them as lights and stuff. No? Okay, just me, that's what I'd do. Moving on now to our number 6, we've got blue lobsters. Yes, and now unlike our last one, this one doesn't need too much explaining. You guys can see it right now. For every 2 million lobsters that are born, one of them will have a genetic mutation that makes them blue. The odds of catching one are just 1 in 10 million, so they are very rare indeed. Apparently it's caused by a genetic mutation that suppresses all other skin pigmentation genes except blue. In normal lobsters, their genes end up giving them a muddy brown colour that blends in perfectly with the sea floor, but not so much if you're bright, bright blue. You're kind of asking to be eaten. Maybe that's why they're so rare. Coming in at number 5 we have Faith the two legged dog. Faith was born in 2002 with a brain defect that stopped the formation of her two front legs. She was adopted by Jude Stringfellow after her son found Faith's mother a stray dog trying to smother her because she instinctively thought that Faith would not be able to survive. Instead Faith not only survived she learned to walk on just two legs. This bizarre adaptation to a mutation led her to become an honorary member of the US Army and even appear on the Oprah show. At number 4 now we have Frank and Louie. Two names, two faces, one single cat. Frank and Louie was the longest surviving Janus cat of all time. Janus cats are cats with two faces named after the two faced Roman god. Now despite looking like two cats in one, they shared one brain and only one of them, Frankie, had a functioning mouth so he ate for both of them. Not gonna lie to you guys, I kinda wish I had a second face right here so that I could use that excuse of eating for both of us and I could eat twice as much and not feel bad. Moving on to number 3 we have We. No really that's the actual name of our next one. Check out this two headed snake known simply as We. This rare albino rat snake belonged to the World Aquarium in St. Louis where it drew in over a million visitors over its lifetime. People were absolutely fascinated because most two headed snakes just die within a few days or weeks but We survived for years due to the fact that its two heads were connected to the same stomach. It also had both male and female reproductive organs. The owners of We even tried to breed it with another two headed snake, presumably to make a four headed snake? I don't know. Has science gone too far? Yes. Coming in at number 2 now we have Octogoat. I didn't name it, that's what everyone was calling it. In 2014 a Croatian farmer was amazed to find his goat had given birth to a kid with 8 legs. He said he counted them and thought he was seeing things and that he even got his neighbour over to check that he wasn't going crazy. But sure enough it had as many legs as a spider. It's thought that the goat actually had absorbed its own twin inside the womb and had both male and female reproductive organs because of it. Now sadly scientists said the baby goat wouldn't survive long and it's 
not known if it's still alive today. And finally, at number one, we have this mutated mountain lion. In January 2016, hunters in Idaho, USA, killed a mountain lion after it reportedly attacked their dog. But when they took a closer look at it, they were pretty shocked to find it had fully formed teeth growing out the top of its head. Now, as you might expect, theories started spreading quickly on what could have caused this kind of mutation. Some say that the mountain lion absorbed a twin in the womb. Some say it was a monster tumor which can grow extra teeth in strange places. And some people even say it was caused by radiation spreading across the Pacific from Fukushima, Japan. So guys, next time you think that your tooth is giving you a real headache, yeah, just be glad it's not literally a tooth in your head. Starting off this list, in at number 10, we have LRP5 mutation. Back in 1994, scientists discovered a genetic mutation known as LRP5. This is a gene that regulates the production and release of protein, which means your body could produce more protein into your bones or less protein into your bones. It plays a major role in your bone density. Well, this mutation was discovered when a man was in a serious car crash, but after he got x-rays, there didn't seem to be any fractures or broken bones when there should have been. Because of the LRP5 mutation, this man's bones were actually eight times more dense than the average person. Also, it has been discovered that this has been genetically found in this guy's family-like tree. Like his family members have this condition. This man has family members who was unable to get a hip surgery because doctors were unable to screw anything into the bones. And at number nine, we have the MFS syndrome, which is the Marfan syndrome. It is a genetic disorder that affects the connective tissues in your body. It actually affects people differently. People who have this syndrome typically have very flexible joints, but it also comes with scoliosis, serious complications involving the heart and aorta, and it also can affect the lungs, eyes, bones, and covering of the spinal cord. 25% of this condition is inherited from a parent, while 25% of the time it is a new mutation. Right now, there is no known cure for Marfan syndrome, but there are treatments that help prolong life. Life. Before preventative treatments, the average lifespan was between about 30 and 40 years old, and now people with this condition can have a normal life expectancy. Next up, number eight, we have epidermal dysplasia vertical formis, which is otherwise known as tree man syndrome. Well, it is a very rare autoimmune recessive hereditary skin disorder that is actually associated with skin cancer. Two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. This is uh, the, the thumb. It should be the thumb and some of the tip of the finger on the surface. I can see that. This is a very debilitating human mutation that is extremely rare that results in uncontrolled HPV infections that result in the growth of what looks like a very scaly bark, you know, from a tree. There are no treatments for this because it's so rare and it doesn't affect enough people, you know, to get funding behind it. There's only a handful of people in the world with this very rare condition. Moving into number seven, we have a Proteus syndrome, which is a very rare condition that causes human bones, skin, and other tissues to over grow. This syndrome is also known as the elephant man syndrome. Yeah, a lot of you guys probably heard of it. There have just been over 200 cases of the syndrome worldwide in history. And saying that right now, it's estimated that just 120 people with that condition are still alive. With almost 8 billion people in the world, that is extremely rare. In 2011, researchers were able to determine the cause of the Proteus syndrome. Patients with this condition have a mutation in there. Well, the mutation is the AKT1 gene is pretty much a gene that controls your body's growth factors. The most famous case of this condition is Joseph Merrick. This is the guy right here. He is known as the original elephant man. He became famous when he was seen in freak shows. Merrick was able to live with this condition for 27 years. Number six, we have a progeria, also known as the hutchinson glifford progeria syndrome, or HGPS for short. It's a very generic condition that causes the child's body to age fast. People who suffer from progeria are said to age about eight times the normal rate. With that being said, most people don't live past the age of 13 years old. There's a very famous girl who has progeria. She is a YouTuber. Her name is Adelie Rose, and she's one of the most inspirational people ever. Hey guys, it's me, Adelia. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be doing things I do in my off time. Like, when I'm not doing She's pretty funny and she has such a big personality and such a positive look on life. 
Moving into number five, here we have a girl who was born with two faces and this was due to a very rare mutation. She starts from craniofacial duplication, which is a rare congenital disorder in which part of the face is duplicated on the head. It doesn't seem like experts believe that this is due to an unborn twin, you know, maybe a parasitic twin or something, because there are no additional bodies or anything else additional to, than just the face. This little girl was born to a very poor family who are farm laborers in a village in New Delhi. The little girl has an extra pair of eyes, nose, and lips. The girl is able to blink all of her eyes and she can feed out of both mouths. I feel really bad for this family and of course this poor little girl. She has seen a doctor and they say that she's actually fine. She sleeps, eats, cries like a normal baby, which just sounds so insane to me. Next up, number four, we have another very rare mutation of the hands and feet. Well, this right here is a picture of a six-year-old boy from China. His name is Li Jin Ping, and he was born with 15 fingers and 16 toes. And as you can see on his hands, a lot of his fingers are actually fused together. The condition is known as polydactyl, which just means someone who was born with one or more extra fingers. Doctors at the Shang Zhang Hospital of China Medical University in Shang Yang was able to successfully remove all of the additional fingers and toes in a surgical operation that lasted more than five hours. Moving into number three, let's talk about hypertrichosis, aka the werewolf syndrome. This is real. Today, Larry Gomez is a minor celebrity. He's made his appearance his trademark, and he's begun to feel comfortable in his skin. This condition causes the human body to have an abnormal you know, amount of hair growth all over their body. Hypertriosis can also be present at birth or even developed later in life. Julia Pastrana was one of the most famous people with this condition. Here she is right here and she was a part of many freak shows and became famous in the 1800s. Scientists believe this is caused by mutation of the A22 band of chromosome 8, meaning that this may not be inherited through the genes. This could happen to anyone, but it's it's extremely rare. All right, number two, we have alien hand syndrome. That could be due to a mutation or something neurologically. Alien hand syndrome, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of this one. Well, it's when your limbs, they just start moving on their own. Like you would randomly just raise your hands up in the air or you would pick up something and you didn't even tell your brain to do that. People who have alien hand syndrome in which I can't believe that this is actually the name for it, like the scientific name for it. Well, it mostly affects people's left hand. Well, that kind of sucks for me because I am left-handed. Right now, there is no cure for the alien hand syndrome. Finally, number one, we have polychoria, aka double pupils. I don't know why I got freaked out when I was doing the research for this one. I was seeing all of these pictures. It's just not a normal thing. In fact, it's super rare. It's a pathological condition where one of the eyes have multiple pupil openings in the iris. Let me show you guys a few examples of people who have this condition and the way it can appear in someone's eyes. First, up we have this. Here we can see a double pupil, but it's kind of not even there. It's very small, and I'm not sure how much lighter objects that this person's able to see. I think it was taken before dilation, because take a look at this picture right here. This is the same eye. So when dilated, the pupil, it kind of looks normal. Here's another image of a double pupil. This one is more obvious, and here's what it looks like dilated. The pupil is absolutely massive. If you enjoyed this video about shocking human mutations, then you have to check out this video next. It's about demonic possession and the videos we're about to show you are seriously scary. Click the video now.